ranking the best unstoppable cards in Madden 25. And boys, we're back here with another promo reveal. Today, we're getting unstoppable part two. Before we get into today's video, I do want to talk about our sponsor real quick, MMOEXP.com. If you guys want an alternative to buying packs, consider buying coins at MMOEXP and make sure to use code DILLA checkout for 5% off your order. Now, right before we do go ahead and get into the new cards right here, just want to take a look at the old tier list and give you guys my updated thoughts. So I do think Jesse Bates is still the best free safety in the game. I think outside linebacker wise tj watt versus ted Hendricks. i feel like it's a wash so i'm gonna keep tj watt at this best of position now cole Komet, i do think it's time for him to come down i think the uh, player of the month george kittle also getting the tight end apprentice being a better run blocker i think that player of the month george kittle is better than cole Komet. and besides that i feel like everything can stay the same now the first card we got today is 88 overall geno smith we're not covering the 85s or the 83s today now geno smith do i think there's a great reason to run him no he's a little bit slower compared to the top end quarterbacks with 77 speed has 89 throw power which is nice and decent accuracies across the board Geno Smith as well we can go ahead and check his uh previous card right here I believe he had a core elite in the game where he has the over the top two release same as like Randall Cunningham Andrew Luck basically it feels like every quarterback's getting over the top two so Geno Smith for me I feel like he's an okay quarterback in the game I mean, I would say more like just a mid-tier quarterback. We also get David Anyamata right here, and this is a card that is six foot three, 300 pounds, has 70 speed with 84 acceleration, so not the worst physical stats. Has 85 power moves, but lower finesse moves, but decent block shit as well. Now, if we go ahead and look at David Anyamata's traits, because this is really going to determine how good this card is, right? And if we take a look, right, he has the bull rush move on yes, spin and swim on no. What this means is think of bull rush as power move, Moves, spin and swim as finesse moves and that basically says hey you can block out the finesse move rating so this card 70 speed 84 excel 85 power moves 89 block shed i think he's a solid defensive tackle in the game um he's not like crazy by any means i feel like david animada is mm, right by dalvin tomlinson i don't hate like they're both kind of big body defensive tackles yeah i'm gonna put him in the good tier solid defensive tackle after that we have levante david and levante david is six foot one decent height has 87 speed 86 acceleration 90 play rec is really really nice but only 84 zone like you could get it up to 85 with strategy items I feel like this card just really doesn't do anything crazy. Like this card does have better zone than Zaire Franklin, but I feel like they're like on the same level, man. Like not the greatest physical stats at this point for the middle linebacker. I feel like they've just been kind of statting Levante David card super bad for a couple of years now. After that, though, we get Mitch Morse and Mitch Morse is six foot six, 305. And this card, keep in mind, he is an 88 overall, 90 pass block finesse, 91 pass block power, 87 run block. Like that that like balance of ratings being higher than an 88 like i think this is kind of like almost a hidden 90 overall center and for that reason i think mitch morse is a great center in the game i'm placing him right by ellen jenkins i feel like he's actually better than his 88 overall after that we get kevin dotson this is a card that is six foot four 321 also has 82 pass block finesse this time which is slightly lower at this point it's not like bad but it is slightly lower like i said um 89 pass block power 89 run block i think he's a tier below the card we just covered i'm gonna go ahead and place uh kevin dotson in this good tier solid right guard and then right after that we get james connor and james connor is six foot one 233 i like the big running backs this year man i feel like they fall forward and i feel like they run routes better and also a little bit better in pass protection as well this is a card that has 89 speed 86 excel 90 trucking 87 break tackle like don't think he's crazy by any means but this is not really a bad running back in my opinion i feel like james connor is also going to be a really fun card to use this is going to be someone that also is going to go ahead and be in this good tier for me not a potential bad budget running back this is probably the most interesting 88 overall though kevin byard right here he is five foot 11 so he's a little bit shorter but i really like the fact that this card hits 91 zone like i do not the fastest in the world either i honestly think he's pretty similar to damar hamlin that card and he's 80 89 speed 88 acceleration right on damar hamlin level like very very similar card so i think he's like good to great and i don't hate either which one is this a great safety in the game i feel like his man is a little bit low he's a little bit shorter i'm gonna place him as like my favorite card in this good tier so far definitely a very solid budget option as well we also get baron browning right here and baron browning is six foot three 240 has 89 speed 93 acceleration so really good like physical stats for the for a pass rusher right he has 88 power moves 88 block shed 81 finesse moves now we are going to go ahead and look at baron browning's traits right here 
here because this could actually make him even better. So Baron Browning from a trade standpoint only has the bull rush move on yes. So looking back at this card, he's not going to use 81 finesse moves. It's only going to be 88 power moves. And I think with that speed, with that Excel and the block shed is good as well. I think he is on this great tier level right here as a rusher just that speed and excel is kind of crazy so yeah gonna place him in the great tier and now we get into the 91s right here where we got some heavy hitters the first one we got is defensive tackle jeffrey simmons now jeffrey simmons right here is six foot four 305 he has 80 speed 93 excel though so some people might be a little bit worried about the speed but i would say excel is probably even more important for the defensive lineman or a pass rusher has 91 power moves 91 block shit 89 finesse moves and on top of that these unstoppable X factors that if you can get them active, they will be on the entire game, potential relentless or double or nothing. But Jeffrey Simmons, just from a pure rating standpoint, if we go to defensive tackle right now, right? I think he just wipes everyone from a rating standpoint. Like who's really like near him? Maybe it's Chris Jones, but I mean, maybe it's uh, Booger McFarlane, but give me Jeffrey Simmons over them all placing Jeffrey Simmons in best of position. Now, after Jeffrey Simmons, we have Justin Jefferson, and this is a card that is six foot one, has pretty decent height. I did some testing and also asked around other people as well. Um, last year, Justin Jefferson had this bug with his routes that just made him run really bad routes. I believe he does not have that this year. So that's something we don't have to worry about. Uh, 92 speed on the card, hits 90s across the board for route running. And again, unstoppable X factor, potentially a double me or route tech is super interesting. I don't think Justin Jefferson is a top three receiver in the game. And I get his 92 speed. For me, it's about the height. I do not think he's better than DK Metcalf, Randy Moss, or Brian Thomas Jr. That is still my trio of receivers. I think he's right by JSN for me, and I get why you would like him. For me, he's someone that is definitely in the meta. I just don't quite think he is the best receiver in the game, and I would take three receivers over him. Now, after that, though, we do get Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry is 6'3", 247, so huge running back, has 92 speed, 87 acceleration, 93 break tackle, and the catching isn't great. Trucking, break tackle type of back, Derrick Henry should be someone that falls forward, should be good in pass protection, and because of his player model, should be able to run pretty good routes. Even though the catching's low, the short route running's gonna be low, I think Derrick Henry is gonna be the best running back in the game. So in my opinion, I'm placing him best of position. I'll take him over Icky. Literally any running back that I can think of in this game, I'm taking Derrick Henry. I like the big running backs, placing him in best of position. And now for our final 91 overall right here, we get Sauce Gardner. And Sauce Gardner is six foot three, tall piece in the secondary. Has 92 speed, 91 excel, has 93 press, 91 zone, 92 man, 85 play rec. The only like weakness of this card is, don't think he's gonna get that pick artist ability as a base ability. You can see he gets it as an unstoppable X factor, but but as a base ability, not going to get it. But Sauce Gardner is a tall piece in the secondary. Not too many people are six foot three. I feel like him, Woolen, Israel, Mukama from the uh, MCS reward, if you guys did get it, they all have to play. And Sauce doesn't necessarily have to be the best outside corner. You can play Sauce on the outside and the slot at safety. I think this card just has to play in the secondary. So for me, he is a, another easy addition to best at position. And for the LTDs right here, first one up, we got Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels is six foot four, has 91 speed, hits all the accuracy thresholds, 91 throw on the pressure, 91 throw on the run. And we're going to go ahead and do some things real quick. First off, we're going to pull up Jaden Daniels' old card, and you're going to see, yeah, has that three quarters one release like that release and also right here we're gonna go ahead and pull up randall cunningham because i feel like Jaden daniels and randall cunningham are gonna be the cards that you compare them to and in the current state of the game with the current ap setup randall cunningham is a gunslinger quarterback that gets like identifier for zero which is cool but the value of Jaden daniels i feel like is backyard quarterback for zero is kind of crazy like or also gunslinger for one if this is very easy to activate like these two things right here i think this is what's going to go ahead and make Jaden daniels my qb1 now i think this card is going to be insanely priced but i'm going to go ahead and place him as my best quarterback and now ending off the video right here we do get right in trey hendrickson this is a card that is six foot four 270 has 87 speed 94 acceleration 93 finesse moves 88 block shed 88 power moves now this is a card that does get some unstoppable x factors but if we look at the right in position is he better than micah is he better than dwight freeney is he better than von miller right and when we look at the stats right here i'm gonna go ahead and say no i think he's on the same level as them i don't think he's the best though so 
I'm just gonna go ahead and place Trey Hendrickson in this great tier. You can debate placement, but yeah, boys. This has been my thoughts on the unstoppable cards working today in Madden 25 Ultimate Team. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today, man. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Madden 25 content just like this. Now, if you guys do want to go ahead and see me use some of these cards live on stream, I am going to be streaming today at 1.30 when these cards are dropping. So if you guys do want to see that, make sure to hit that noti bell here on YouTube. You'll be notified every time I upload or go live here. Or if you guys want to watch on the Twitch, check the links in the description. Hit that Twitch with a follow. But if you guys do want another video to watch, check out this one right here.